Hello, I'm Bill Wade, CFO of Mentor Schools, and thanks for joining me today as we share the fiscal year 25 appropriations, which is the approval the board gives the district to be able to spend the budget for the fiscal year. Our revenue comes in the form of basically two main sources, local sources made up of property taxes from our local taxpayers, as well as our commercial properties, as well as 22.6% uh, coming from the state made up of state aid, as well as reimbursements that we get for the state based on your property tax bill. And the other major source coming from our intermediate and other revenue sources, which comes in the form of uh, various different things, primarily in the form of interest on our investment earnings that we have for our cash balance. As we look at that in comparison to the state, uh, you can see that the state revenue uh, is much different than ours. The state average for local revenue is closer to 42%. Uh, and 43% for state. So we are uh, considered a wealthy district based on the median income as well as the average property values. So that causes us to receive less state aid and it has more of a reliance on the local property tax. And then what we have here is an historical general fund revenue by source, again, showing that the majority of our property, uh, excuse me, most of our revenue comes from the local property tax payers as shown here in the blue section. Uh, the red section being that state re, uh, aid and reimbursements that I spoke of on the last slide. But what this also shows our community is that our revenue remains relatively flat over time. Uh, and that goes back into the uh, discussion that I had in my last presentation that I shared with the community regarding House Bill 920 and property tax valuations and how valuations are impacted by House Bill 920 keeping things relatively flat. So you, again, you can see here uh, that this graph clearly shows that. What the main goal of the appropriations is, is to give the district the authorization from the board to spend their funds for the current year on our expenses. Um, as this graph shows, the majority of our expenses, almost 83.4% of our expenses go back in the form of salaries and benefits for our employees. Being the fact that we're in the business of educating uh, mentors uh, students, uh, we are a service industry, so it would make sense hopefully for most people that the majority of our expenses come in the form of uh, salaries and benefits for those employees. Um, we do see about 10% in purchase services, again, to support the learning of the students. 4% in supplies and about 1.1% in other areas um, making up capital assets. This graph here shows uh, kind of that uh, in, a, in a different format, kind of showing from a longitudinal standpoint, again, from fiscal year 21 through the current budget year in 25. Again, blue and red making up salaries and benefits, seeing that that kind of stays uh, relatively flat over the last few years. Um, we've been able to control that and I'll explain how in the next slide here. Um, but you can see again, our expenses have remained pretty relatively flat. Uh, we did see a little bit of a spike in fiscal year 23 uh, with a decrease in 24 and we're seeing a slight growth in 25. Being the fact that we're in the service industry in the form of educating our students, student enrollment is a huge factor when we look at our budget. Um, we have to make sure that our enrollment and our staffing is aligned. Um, over the last uh, five years, we've seen a decline in enrollment. Um, you know, from 7,250 students to 6,626 is what we were at at the beginning of September. Um, and as a result, um, we've reduced staffing, which if we go back to this slide, it shows why, uh, you know, between 23 and 24, we actually saw a decrease in our staffing costs here. So uh, one of the big forms being 84% of our budget being approximately with staffing, uh, we have to take a look at our uh, staffing levels. And when we look at it again, we show here down at the bottom that our staffing over the last few years has actually decreased. Uh, the increase that we see in fiscal year 21 was because of COVID. Um, so those uh, teachers were then uh, over the time as we've kind of recovered from COVID and getting back to normal class sizes, seeing a decrease that corresponds to the declining enrollment. Uh, this graph shows again, going kind of back to I think 2004, uh, when we were in fiscal crisis, where we have had the declining enrollment since then. We've dropped staffing appropriately since that same time. Again, the spike here is because of COVID, um, but I think it's important for the community to see that because 84% of our budget, again, is regarding the salary and benefits that it is corresponding appropriately and proportionally to the decline in enrollment as well, and that's how we can control our expenses. What we're looking at, again, since uh, this year is that uh, we're looking at about $110.7 million in revenue. Uh, our expenses are about $115.67 uh, million. Uh, so we're gonna see a deficit spend projected of about $4.9 million, which means for the fourth year, or excuse me, fifth year in a row, we will see uh, continued deficit spending, spending down our cash reserve, which if you're a numbers person, there's data kind of shows, again, the historical trend, but really what I want to point out here on this slide is that uh, at the end of the year, based on the current revenue and uh, expenses that we are projecting, we're going to see a decrease in our 
beginning balance of 53 point, almost $8 million to about $48.8 million by the end of the fiscal year in our cash balance. Then lastly, uh, obviously this year's budget includes uh, our spending plan, uh, which includes the capital plan as well as our PI fund. I think it's important to reiterate to the community that post uh, last year's uh, election in November with the failure of the uh, new money PI levy that we had, we had to make some tough decisions uh, as an administrative team. Mr. Heath and his team worked uh, with our office to make uh, cuts. And this year, um, we're at about $3.5 million. Um, we cut out furniture spending, we've reduced our bus spending, um, and we've reduced our spending uh, in our identified safety maintenance needs as well as how we are looking uh, to do that. So it's a, down to about $3.5 million, which is actually about $3 million less than the average that we were sharing during the uh, election last year. And then kind of phasing out and going into the next out years, because it is a five-year plan, we're averaging about $4.5 million, which again is about $2 million on average less than it was when we were projecting the, the money uh, needed for the PI levy back then because of decisions that were made to reduce that spend. So happy to uh, answer any questions. Please feel to reach out to me. Um, you can reach me at wade at mentorschools.org. Happy to discuss anything that you may have regarding this year's appropriations. Thank you.